We have a few long stories, we have a few short stories, and we have some anti-confessions. We'll tell you what those are at the end of the episode. Wow, I'm already intrigued. I have no idea what an (laughs) anti-confession is. Vanessa just made that up on the spot. Literally just made that up. Hello and welcome to the Pillow Talks podcast. We're your hosts, Vanessa and Xander Marin. I'm a sex therapist with over 20 years of experience. And I'm just a regular dude. We share the ups and downs in our relationship while giving you step-by-step techniques for improving yours. Make sure you subscribe for your weekly double date full of totally doable sex tips, practical relationship advice, hilarious and honest stories of what really goes on behind closed bedroom doors, and so much more. It's the sex education you wish you'd had. We have a very different kind of episode for you today. We know it's the holidays for all of our U.S. listeners. A lot of people are traveling this week, going to see family. Some people love Thanksgiving. Other people get real stressed out by it. But I think it just tends to stir up a lot for most people. So we decided to do something special and have a confessions episode oh yeah so we put up a box on instagram it was totally anonymous we said share your sexiest secrets your most embarrassing stories your funniest tales of sex gone wrong and we thought we would make you laugh today by sharing some of our favorite stories Thanks to Julie for supporting Pillow Talks. Julie is an FDA-approved morning-after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraceptive company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame. You can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest Walmart today. But first, I'll do my damnedest to make you laugh with our review of the week. All right. All right. I'm a big fan. Noticing improvement. <laughs> dot dot dot. Thanks, Apple, for cutting that off. I noticing improvement in something. In what? In, in their what? in their sex life? In our podcast? In my performance. In, in your Xander's performance? performance, I think is what they're saying. In our level no, of entertainment. I have no idea. <laughs> but we'll see. All right. Vanessa and Xander, thanks for all you do. My husband and I have been together for 12 years, married for five, and we've been stuck in the roommate's phase for over a year. This has left me feeling quite resentful a lot of the time. I found your podcast just a few days ago, and I've been binging your very entertaining, relatable episodes. Last night, I began talking to my husband about what I've been learning, and we had a nice heart-to-heart talk, which brought back that feeling Mm -hmm. of connection that we've been missing. Today, my husband made a real effort to show me he loves me. Thanks for helping us take a step in the right direction and for opening my eyes to new perspectives. I highly recommend this podcast. Wow. Well, it didn't make me laugh, but that was a delightful review. (laughs) It it didn't make you laugh. It almost made you cry. (laughs) It's really sweet. I just, yeah, we love hearing your stories and we are so appreciative of you for leaving reviews of the podcast. It is the best way to help the podcast grow and get in front of more people, help people like who stumble across the podcast. You know, they see all these reviews and they're like, oh, okay, this sounds like a good one. I'll give it a shot. You know, if you come across a podcast and it has like, three reviews and two of them are bad like you're not gonna listen to it (laughs) yeah i think if if i read this review and i was anywhere close to this person's situation i'd be like wow i gotta listen to this podcast yes so as our thank you for taking the time to leave a review on apple podcasts we do this weekly giveaway so if you hear your review featured as our review of the week you can dm us on instagram at either Vanessa Marin Therapy or Vanessa and Xander. (laughs) We're not sure where our home is going to be at the time that this episode comes out, but you can DM us over there and ask us a question, and we will respond with our best advice, tips, a mini coaching session. So thank you again for just taking the time to go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a quick review. It does not have to be this long, doesn't have to be meaningful. It can be some funny inside joke you heard from an episode or just like a thumbs up emoji. But we'd prefer it if it was meaningful. I mean, of course, yeah. But like, you know, I know people are busy. I don't don't want them to think they have to spend the time to craft this like beautiful, meaningful review. Like, it's okay to just say like, great podcast. Love it. Recommend listening. Okay, so let's get into our confessions. So we have three different categories of confessions for you. We have a few long stories. We have a few short stories. And we have some 
anti-confessions. We'll tell you what those are at the end of the episode. Wow, I'm already intrigued. I have no <laughs> idea what an anti-confession is. Vanessa just made that up on the spot. I literally just made that up. I'm not even sure if it really makes sense, but we'll explain once we get there what those ones are. Okay, Vanessa's buying time so that she can think <laughs> of an explanation. I like this. I support this. I will make sure we circle back to this. I'm going to really dig into what an anti-confession is. <laughs> Maybe you're like a Reverse confession might be a better better way. We'll get to okay. it. We'll get to it. All right. I okay. mean, anti-reverse, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm still not sure I understand it, but that's cool. Let's go. Okay, so here's our first long confession. Husband and I have a tradition of having sex outdoors on New Year's Eve to ring in the new year. I have done this. Have you? Uh, out. Oh, outdoors on New Year's Eve? No, ringing in the new year, having sex. Oh, like over the... No, I... Like literally having sex as the clock strikes midnight. Yeah, I have not. I have not. I I guess that's what this person is saying. I didn't even read it like this when I was hearing it. But yeah, I guess what they are saying is as the clock strikes midnight, they're they're doing it. How have we never done that? We are usually asleep. (laughs) That is not true. That's only been the last like year or two. Get out of here. I feel like it's been the last many years. I I don't know how we've not done this. Maybe like because we're out at a party or something. Hey, 2023? Yeah, maybe. Where are you going to be? Should we bring it in? Better uh, set an alarm. (laughs) (laughs) That's only been like the last like couple of years. COVID times. Okay. Anyways, I have done this once. It was with an old college boyfriend I was visiting him, staying at his parents' house, but they were not cool with letting us share rooms, and so we rented a hotel. But it was like a really gross hotel. And I remember having sex as the clock struck midnight, and I was like, this is actually kind of gross. I'm not Mm. into this. (laughs) Wait, wait. Hold on. I'm not sure I I understand. They wouldn't allow you to share a room, but they allowed you to get a hotel room? Yeah. You that know. makes no sense. Like I, that's just like not under my roof. Exactly. It was one of those kinds. But of go things. have fun. I mean, but not <laughs> under my roof. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Anyways, let's get back to this person's story. Last year we were in Hawaii visiting his parents and decided to do it in their backyard. It's dark, we can hear the ocean, it's super romantic and great. Mm. The next morning, my mother-in-law says, I need to check the cameras later. My phone was pinging all night with motion alerts. Oh, boy. <laughs> Me and my husband are like, since when are there cameras? We try to access the video on their main security console. Wait, wait, where do these people live? <laughs> it's on the main security console. In the bank vault. <laughs> She is. Are you picturing one of those, like, a room full of security cameras everywhere? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm picturing, like, a casino, <laughs> you know, like, like, like Ocean's Eleven style. Like, we got oh, bra- yeah. to break into the security room so that we can knock out the security cameras. I mean, it probably feels like a whole Ocean's Eleven hijinks, like, trying to figure out how to get in there and get this freaking motion sensor footage off. I hope so. <laughs> she said, we easily find the dark, grainy, very obviously sexy video right away but there's no delete option oh this sounds actually like a very secure security system (laughs) that they don't allow you to delete the footage we end up having to tell his parents that there's video on the security camera of us that they're not going to want to see so awkward i think about it just about every time we see them Oh, you know what? I feel like I would try to do maybe what? to to make the situation a little a little better. It would be like we're trying to make you a grandchild oh, no. <laughs> outdoors in your backyard. I mean, I feel like it doesn't really it doesn't matter where you make it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you think the parents watched the video? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just feel like if they're like, it would turn into a sweet moment. Like, oh, yeah, grandchild. Thank you so much. It'd be like, Thank you for having sex in my backyard. <laughs> Instead of like, oh, now there's this video that we can't delete. <laughs> like, I know I don't want to watch it, wow. but like I kind of do because it's here. And <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, there's Xander's hack for getting out of it the next time you get caught. On the security console. Yeah, the next time you access the security console and there's no delete. All right, moving on. 
Next one. My husband and I are super into threesomes. We were both on several hookup dating sites to find people that were interested. One day, I got a private message from my mother with a screenshot of my husband's <laughs> Tinder profile. No. no. <laughs> Someone had sent it to her thinking that he was having an affair. Oh, God. Although the intentions were good, she's super religious, and for days she pestered us about it because I told her to let it go. I didn't want to get into detail with her, so I just told her that I already knew about it, but that didn't work. That doesn't sound like, the, oh, I already knew. Don't worry about it. Like, that is not going to be enough explanation. I know. I mean, I, I well, here, finish reading this one. Oh, yeah. I, I eventually had to explain our situation <laughs> so she would stop. I mean, I totally get that this person, you know, did not want to have to explain to their religious mom that, like, we have threesomes and, of course, he's up on dating profiles. But I also totally understand the mom being like, wait, no, like, why are you not taking this seriously? He's cheating on you. Look what he's doing. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's got to be some more specialized dating apps for this type of thing rather than just straight up Tinder where, you know, like anyone who knows you could accidentally see you or match with you or I something. I mean, there definitely are, but I'm thinking that they were just trying to like, you know, put cast their, the net wide. Cast the net wide. And of course, Tinder would be like the one yeah. most likely to, to come up. Yeah. I mean, they did say they were super into threesomes. So <laughs> <laughs> they needed, we need as many threesomes as we can get. Can you imagine your mom seeing your dating profile? Like just you saying you're super into anything sexually. <laughs> Your mom just like stumbles upon it. <laughs> like, Xander, I don't understand why you're saying this. I don't That's know. I've never I've never had a dating profile, so I don't I, I don't really know. We met before dating apps. Man, I gotta say about dating profiles, like it seems really hard. Okay, let's do the next one. My husband is a naval officer. He shipped out for officer candidate school three weeks after our wedding. OCS is 13 weeks long, and it was the longest we had ever been apart. When he got back, we were both horny AF, but still had to wait all day for a moment alone. We go out to a bar, and he looks at me and was like, I can't wait. The bar we were in was divided into two huge rooms separated by sliding barn doors in order to keep everyone in the main bar area. We sneak into the second room that is completely empty and go behind the bar in there and I proceed to give him head. A bartender walks through to get to the storage room and starts to say, this area is closed. Then he's like, oh shit, sorry, but please use a napkin, all caps. What is a napkin? <laughs> For what? So I replied, spitters are quitters. We don't need a napkin. <laughs> and he ran out of there so fast. Needless uh, okay, to... <laughs> spitters are quitters is a, is, is a hilarious line. I have never, I actually have I have that never heard that in my life. But it's such a good line and it rhymes. I, mean... I feel like that must be a totally common saying that I've just never heard. So do you think the bartender thinks that she was going to spit it like on the floor or yeah, something? Like, I, just I think leave so it? that like that. Oh, my God, there's just going to be come everywhere. <laughs> I mean, he was gone 13 weeks, so it was probably a lot of cum. <laughs> likely, likely. But still, like, blowjobs don't tend to result in, like, a large mess to clean up. I like there's there, – blowjobs don't have a reputation for being particularly messy, right? Like, you can kind of I mean, do it you – know, you can kind of do it anywhere. People, people who don't want to swallow, which, to be clear, you're allowed to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, but they don't but... spit it all over the place. <laughs> I know. Like, the vodka thing is really funny. Like it's, where did he think she was going to spit it's it? It's not like a fire hose where it's like <laughs> – <laughs> So she says, needless to say, my husband lost his boner and we couldn't stop laughing. That was our one and only attempt at public sex. All right. Next one. Me, my husband and our two best friends, male and female, would hang out. And once the drinks got flowing, we would always end up naked and have sex in the same room. And it was so much fun. Mm. I would make out with the other wife while the guys watched. And then we'd go back to our respective husbands and have sex with them. After having kids and moving to other states, we don't do it anymore. But we would if we could. Oh, oh. very sexy. Would you be into this? I feel like I could probably get down with this. Really? I would say no. 
<laughs> okay. You would say you would think that I would say no, or you are a no on this. I would think that you would say no. That you wouldn't really be into like other people having sex in the same room. You'd feel like the idea of you being watched while having sex with me. I don't think he'd be into that. Well, I mean, I guess like maybe the difference <laughs> being watched by two people <laughs> that you know versus like. <laughs> However many anonymous people, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I think the funny thing is you think of public sex and you think of like, oh, I'm just in the middle of the street and like hundreds of people are walking by and watching. But it no. doesn't mean that. You're so against public sex. <laughs> That's not we've, Kay, we've just had give some- public qu- sex a chance, babe. We've had some quasi-public, like yeah, that's hotel what I mean. pool, no, yes. like our own- pool in yes, our own hotel room public. not not like in the middle of, that, that's of, what most people mean of a large with hotel public pool. sex people aren't just like out there in the middle of the street doing it well that maybe maybe i'm kind of into public sex now i don't know <laughs> oh stay tuned for episode 80 xander like, tries public sex in the so middle of the road this this situation um, I feel like I was one time in college I was close to being in this situation this feels like a very college and thing. and it got yeah, I think it got shut down by either my girlfriend at the time or the, the other girlfriend girl. of my other friend or something. Like mm-hmm. I remember it getting shut down. It was like it was like, oh whoa, this is like, is this about to happen? <laughs> and then one person was not cool with it. My girlfriend had a room like right next to this other girl's room, and so then it was just like someone had to go to their room really quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to our short stories. Wait, wait, but you didn't answer me. Would oh. you be down with this? Um, I would do it. I don't know if I'd necessarily be like super turned on by it, and it would, it would. I was trying to think. <laughs> Man, so you give me all this shit about my about not being into public sex, this, this <laughs> and now you're like, now you're like, well, I'm not I mean, into I, it. Can you think of any of our friends that you would feel <laughs> comfortable? Now like, you're just throwing on by. Now you're just throwing have, our friends under the bus. We have very attractive and sexy friends, but I'm not sure that I want to watch any of them have sex. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking like a theoretical situation. Like I don't know, we meet a new couple. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would rather like I'd I feel like I'd rather have an actual group sex experience than just like Oh, you just want to go for it all the way. <laughs> Not like, even dip your just, toes in. Then just have two couples in the room. Like that it just feels kind of like ecology to me. Not to be like judgmental of this person. We love it for you. Um but I don't know. It just is like I, I've got my own room now. I can have sex in my own room. So I'm like, I guess. Oh, like rather- like these people is like, God, the only place we can have sex is in this room here together. I'm just not like I'm not super turned on by it. Yeah. But I would if the if the moment strikes, babe, the time's right, sure. But yeah, it's I don't, not like a fantasy or a big turn on. Yeah, I, I don't find myself fantasizing about this like ever. I just feel like somehow if we got into the situation which it seems very unlikely <laughs> given just like the way that we live our like I, I can't really think of a scenario where we would be like with another couple and then like making out and yeah so it's probably not gonna happen i just also think the logistics of it are funny too like would it bring up performance issues of like could like what if one guy comes way faster than the other guy and then you're yeah. just like sitting there like uh. <laughs> oh okay whoops <laughs> god we really fucked this up, up? <laughs> i know yeah like yeah one person's like taking like 20 minutes and the other couple like um okay i feel like we can't really get up <laughs> go anywhere without causing a scene uh-huh. I yeah. feel like the logistics could be could a Could get funny. on. We'd be like, hey, bro, like 30 more seconds? Like, let's do this. <laughs> like checking in with Like, I'm, I'm setting the timer on my phone. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up on your clothes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Come when the alarm goes off. <laughs> That sounds so weird. Okay, so let's go into our shorter stories. We also just got a bunch of like, you know, one to two little sentence, like quickie confessions here. So let's run through these. Looks like you're getting all the group sex ones, babe. Yeah, I guess group sex is <laughs> is my new thing. I don't know. Group public group sex. Bring it. Stay tuned. Fucking for bring it. Eighty one. Xander, Xander has group, group sex in public. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. 
Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. This one sounds hot, though. Okay. <laughs> Had an orgy with six of my female coworkers. I'm female. <laughs> We're all nurses. Oh, so six female nurses having an orgy all together. Do you think they did it at the hospital? Do you think they scissored? <laughs> Oh my God. No, they didn't. We just talked about scissoring in our story a couple of days ago. Somebody asked what that is. If you're not familiar with the term, it's kind of like a slangy joke term. For- it's kind of a joke that I think probably 99% of the time only happens in lesbian porn. Yeah. That, so is, no- that is for straight people. Imagine like two, you're making two peace signs and you kind of like interlock them together. So it's like you're rubbing your vulva on each other's vulva. But yeah, it's like a, it's a jokey kind of thing. Totally cool if you're a woman who has sex with a woman and you enjoy doing it, but in general, there's a lot is, of better ways to rub. How, there's yeah. a lot of better ways to rub vulvas in more <laughs> precise and pleasurable so ways. They, they'd be doing three sets of scissors if this is what they were doing. Yeah. But really, though, do you think this happened at the hospital? <laughs> it actually feels really gross. You're like in your scrubs. Was it sanitary? You've been barfed on and been carrying around little bedpans all day. I don't know. I guess we'll never know unless we ask this person to clarify. We love you, nurses. We know you guys work your asses off, so I can't imagine. Yeah, sometimes being... you got to blow off some steam with a little orgy. <laughs> a little orgy in the supply closet. All right, next one. I fake O's after my real one. He loves giving, and it turns me on to fake. I feel like a hot actress. Huh, interesting. I've this never heard this before. Yeah. And I wonder, does he does he know that she's doing that? And he just, mm. they both get into the performative aspect? Or, Maybe. Or is it like, because yeah, I've never heard of faking, of like a woman faking an orgasm in addition to having a real one. A real one. one, yeah, yeah, to continue. I mean, this is like one of the rare instances where I totally give my stamp of approval to faking. Like, if you're Hell yeah. turned on by it, you've already had a real one, so, you know, you feel satisfied, you don't feel like you're deceiving your partner or kind of like depriving him of the ability to like learn what you actually like like this and is, and right? you're enjoying it. yeah and yeah she's and you're, clearly that's enjoying what I was saying. It. you're turned on by it like go for it you hot little actress you i would guess that maybe he doesn't know because i I'm could see it going if he, either way or he could just be like i don't give a shit like i fucking love doing this yeah <laughs> i think that's hot go for it i'm into it If you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom break, or you're just not sure, we're really excited to talk about a brand new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. So Julie Emergency Contraceptive is an FDA approved morning after pill. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as plan B. So essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy, and there is no risk to future fertility. We want to share with you a couple of important facts to know about Julie. Julie works best when taken right away or within 72 hours. You can pick it up in person at Walmarts across the U.S. or you can order it online, have it for the future, a little just-in-case type of moment. And you do not need an ID, prescription, or credit card to get Julie, and it is legal in all 50 states. You can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest Walmart today. That's juliecare.co to learn more okay continue okay well (laughs) i had a threesome with my girlfriend and her friend just to be clear this is what they wrote in i'm i didn't do this (laughs) this is the first one that you think you're reading all these stories in first person and this is the first one you think to clarify well i didn't put in like any transition like okay here's the next one i was just (laughs) well i well okay well i had an (laughs) orgasm Well, I had an orgasm just now. That was cool. That's Xander's confession. He's just yeah. orgasming over here. I just, as we I just faked one. <laughs> just sitting here podcasting and faking orgasms. All right. Podcasting and faking. But for real, I had a threesome with my girlfriend and her friend. Girlfriend and I broke up, and now I'm dating the friend. Oh, this is like so many people's worst nightmare of having a threesome that like your partner will be more into the person that you're having the threesome with. And yeah. so not only like who knows how the actual threesome went, but 
not only did he potentially enjoy having sex with the friend, or, or we don't know the gender of the person writing in, not only did they potentially enjoy having sex with the friend of the girlfriend more, but now they're with the friend. Like, oh. Yeah, I mean, of course we don't know, like, is it a tumultuous situation or is it somehow, you know, is everybody cool with it? But probably not if if the threesome is the thing that precipitated the breakup. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that is why a lot of people do recommend with threesomes, like do it, you know, have the third be someone that is not a friend. Like, you know, find someone where it's it's literally a one night thing so that it's not like, you know, you're going to see them the next day or the next week and have this connection. All right, next confession. After a long time of flirting, I slept with my very attractive mailman. Let's just say, big fan of overnight delivery. Wink, wink. Wow. Interesting. I have questions. Did you sleep with the mailman during his route? Like- <laughs> <laughs> time theft. Time theft. <laughs> you you got to pay USPS back. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you did it really quick. That, that's my Dwight Schrute. You're, I mean, you're literally stealing from USPS. You're, you're stealing from all of us because USPS is like a government organization. It's for all of us. It's how we get our mail. I'm mad at this person. What if what if I was the next person on the on the route and I'm like, I have a very important piece of mail. I'm like looking, you know, I'm like tapping on my watch. Where is this motherfucker? And you see him like sauntering out of your neighbor's house. You're like, oh, this motherfucker. And then and then and then there's just like come all over my letters. Because, you know, I had sex on the mail. Well, yeah, because I mean, it just gets everywhere, right? Like use a fucking napkin. I don't know why, but time theft is like one of the funniest things you've said in in a long time. <laughs> That's the thing you focus on. Oh my god, I have to catch my breath. <laughs> I, I, I think we're gonna have to edit some of this <laughs> laughing out because wheezing. We just have to go to the next one. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll move on for us. Okay. (laughs) We have had a quickie at almost every party and wedding we've been to. Wow. That's actually impressive. Get it. Get it. That sounds challenging. Or or I do wonder, like, do your what I want to know is like, (laughs) do your friends know about this? Is this sort of like like oh. an annoyance where they're like, oh God, if these we, motherfuckers. If we, yeah, these motherfuckers, if we <laughs> invite them, like they are for sure going to have sex in our laundry room <laughs> and not use a napkin. <laughs> or maybe they just stock napkins all over the house because they know like it could happen anywhere. <laughs> You're on a roll, babe. Thanks. I have to confess, I was really worried about recording a podcast today. We were not really in the mood, but I'm actually crying right now. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Good so, job, babe. <laughs> yeah, what I'm really curious about is like, are you guys really so surreptitious that like none of your friends have caught on to this? <laughs> or because it's either it's one or the other. I think this is a situation where there's zero middle ground. <laughs> Like either nobody has any idea and you guys are somehow super, super stealthy. But I think it is more likely than not that it's no. like the dirty secret yeah. of your fat friend group. They're really annoyed with you guys. Yeah, I, I, I want to I would love to hear from the friends. Do, do any of you out there like do you have like a friend? I feel like it's more likely that you would have a friend that does this yeah. rather than it being you yeah. that does this. Like do you does anyone out there have friends where it's just like. <laughs> God damn it. Like, they snuck off again. (laughs) We know what they're doing. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I gave my husband a BJ, and we had intercourse while sharing a, and then they made sure to put in parentheses, small room with my mother-in-law. Okay, 
Why did you feel the need to add small? Like, does it make a difference, the size of the room? Oh, I mean, they're bragging. Like, it, this was not a big room where we were on opposite sides. Like, we were in close quarters. But, I mean, my, my point is, like, I, I unless the room is so large that, you know, it's like like a great room or something where you're on totally like the other sides. You can't see yeah, like the bar where it's really two rooms with like a partition in the middle. But like, I don't think it even matters. Like if, even if it's a large bedroom, like you being on the other side of the room, isn't really going to like make it quieter. <laughs> okay. So let's imagine you haven't had sex for three months. You haven't masturbated either. So you've had like no sexual release for three months but we're in a room with my mom, a no. small room with my mom. Could well, you do it? No, for sure. Well, definitely not with your mom because your mom <laughs> is notorious for waking up at random hours. Like your mom like has a very weird sleep schedule. Yes. And so there's no guaranteeing that she's ever really asleep. She would for sure be like eyes wide open the second that like clothes started rustling. Like, what are you guys up to? Yeah, she would true. Not let that happen. Then again, on the flip side, whenever they have dogs sat for oh, us, wait. No, no, no. our dogs sleep in their room and snore so loud and they never wake up. So yeah, but your mom you, is it's a, it's a bunch to... of uh, contradictions. Okay, wait, I read this incorrectly. It's your mom. Oh, no. Just hard pass. <laughs> hard pass. I mean, I. I at this age, I am never putting myself in that situation. Sorry, mom. Even, <laughs> I don't think she's upset. Trust me. Even you wouldn't. Ha- what if it was like all year? The only time you could have sex for an entire year has to be in a room with your mom. Well, let me just say, I mean, that that would be pretty rude of my mom to be like, <laughs> be like, you guys haven't seen each other for a year and I'm insisting on being in this room with you. In this small room with you. Yeah, you know, I think I Could might you do be, it? I might be, no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, that's, yeah, that's really something. And like. I, I feel like the the only thing that I would maybe be okay with is like, if it was really dark and like, maybe if you were going to like, give me a hand job, like under the covers yeah. or like, or like a blow job. Well, it was a blow job and intercourse. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the intercourse, I feel like there's just no way to do that. True. As I feel like we always think like, oh yeah, we're gonna be really quiet. <laughs> like, you but, know, you yeah. hear. There's wrestling. There's rhythmic movement. You know. You know. <laughs> Can't do it. All right. Well, what about this one, babe? I love to imagine in detail. They put in detail <laughs> in parentheses. Maybe it's the same person. As what the last my one. friends are like while having sex with their partners. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> well, we've already talked about how we don't want to see any of our friends having sex. I don't know if I want to like think about any of our friends having sex like that. I mean, I I've definitely like thought about it from time to I think I have a pretty good sixth sense of like if you're good in bed or not. So I think about that. Mm-hmm. So like, Vanessa's in- constantly judging yes. everyone. Good in bed, good in bed, not good in bed. I mean, I'm not consciously doing it, but I get a vibe. So mm-hmm. there's like a little vibe check going on, but I don't know if I w- want to like, again, our friends are all lovely and sexy and attractive. We love you all. But I don't think I re- really want to like think in detail about what they're like having sex. Yeah, I've never really, other. I've never really done that. Yeah. Interesting. All right, let's move along. My mom walked in on me and my boyfriend during my first time. Oof. Absolutely mortifying. I'm sorry that happened. Your first time. I feel like oh, that's a God. scarring. It's a scarring experience. It's and... already so awkward and like, oh man. I mean, I guess that's we don't we tough. don't know. Like, was it you know was the mom like pissed? Where was oh, yeah. it? Yeah, I like, mean, it could have been a very you know was it an experience. okay situation? Was it a horrible situation? Were you grounded for a whole year afterward? Were you like Were you, thirty did... and your mom walked in like? They, she has a key to your house kind of situation. Who knows? Oh, yeah. We, we can come up with some interesting <laughs> scenarios here, I guess. Did she ask to stay in the small room and yeah. go to sleep while you guys finish? Did she say, oh, I'm just so tired. I needed somewhere to go to sleep. But carry on with whatever you're doing. 
Did she bring your dad and finish off in the corner? Oh, wow. Okay, that just took it to okay. a level that it okay. didn't need to go Sorry, to. Sorry, you finish, finish this up with the last one. Okay. Last one before before the anti confession. <laughs> I didn't forget, babe. I did not forget. Okay. But let, let's enjoy this one. You can have a minute to think. Okay. I was once watching porn and I couldn't hear it. I kept turning it up and down, restarting it, etc. <laughs> oh, oh no. wow, de- de- dedication! I, I, know I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. Not because it's ever happened to me, but I think this has been portrayed in many movies. Uh-huh. <laughs> I ended up giving up and just watched on my phone. Later, my neighbors asked me if I knew anyone that might be connecting to their Bluetooth speaker. (laughs) We have definitely gotten far worse confessions in the past about this. At least you had the anonymity of like your neighbors didn't know. We've had some really bad ones that people have sent in on like Spill It Saturdays where they like accidentally casted it to the T. Oh, God. I remember one where it was like, her husband went into the bathroom and he they realized that he was like jacking off because all of a sudden porn was playing like on the family TV with yeah. all the family around. Oh my god, that one's still seared in my memory. Yeah, like, or or like or ugh. like you're playing like a video of like of like you having sex with uh-huh. your partner like you put it on the video. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah, or work presentations, that's definitely happened before too. God, yeah, the number, yeah, the number of people that write in about like work presentations ruined <laughs> by like you know like a pop up notification uh-huh. on the computer. You, you got to think through this stuff, people. You got to think through this stuff. It's just, just don't one use more Bluetooth. one more reason to be uh, to be technologically savvy. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about anti-confessions. This is a term that I made up on the fly because we got a ton of confessions that as we were reading them, we were like, no, like this is something we need to normalize. Like this is total, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with any of the confessions that we've read so far, but there were certain themes that kept coming up in other ones that we were like, you know what? No, let's just take a little moment to normalize. Like this is okay. It's not something scandalous that you should be ashamed or embarrassed of. Because a lot of people shared with these things like, oh, I'm so embarrassed about X, Y, Z. Or so, or in this case, or it's like a desire that somebody has. is not necessarily a confession. I feel like yeah. a lot of these, it's like, it's like, oh, this thing happened. I've been keeping it secret. And I feel like with confessions, there's this, there's almost a sense of like sharing it to get it off your chest, kind of. And in this case, some of these are like desires or things that people feel like are really big deals. But we think differently. Yeah. So don't you think anti-confessions kind of fits it? Yeah, I think I like it. Okay, good. <laughs> a lot of you are faking orgasms or not having orgasms at all. So aside from the one that we pulled out where she's actually enjoying faking orgasms, there were so many more stories of people who were faking and their partner didn't know and it wasn't a turn on. So just one of those many people said, been with my husband for eight years, two kids and not one orgasm. He has no idea. So with this category of confessions, we really want to encourage you to explore with your partner and to prioritize your pleasure and to stop faking them. Give your partner that chance to learn. Give you the chance to learn and actually start experiencing real ones. Life is too short for faked orgasms, people, especially for eight years. And I mean, we got stories that were way longer than eight years, too. So we are going to link for you our foreplay guides and our next level intercourse. Those have tons of step-by-step techniques for beginners and for advanced. We've got, we cover every range here, but if you're somebody who's like, I've just been faking the whole time. I don't even have the slightest clue what I like or what I need. There are plenty of tips that are great for beginners of getting more pleasure from your partner's hands, their mouth, and during intercourse as well. So we will link all of that for you in the show notes. Similarly, a lot of people confessed that you're maybe trying to have pleasure and orgasms, but your partner is not very good at sex. Um, And some people called out specific acts. Some people just said, like, in general, my partner is not very skillful. Yeah. So like one person said, my partner's terrible at oral, somehow good at kissing, but terrible at oral. So again, those links that we mentioned to our foreplay guides and our next level intercourse, look, no shame, 
none of us learns like sexual technique, right? Like where are we supposed to learn nitty gritty detailed tips about how to have sex, how to pleasure our partners? Well, right? I mean, yeah, the only place we learn is like on the fly. Like we learn by doing. And as we've already talked about, like with many people out there faking orgasms, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with people who are faking orgasm. They're also doing the best that they can in a yeah. bad situation. But you can imagine how your partner may have learned to be terrible at oral. Mm -hmm. Like your partner probably didn't really know how to give oral, didn't know uh -huh. like a bunch of different techniques, did something one time to someone and they Fakes. maybe <laughs> made it sound like it was really, really good and they loved it. And like, you know, so then it just gets reinforced for your partner. They're like, oh, okay, cool. This works. Like this seems mm -hmm. to work for everyone. And so like, so many of us all the time are just operating, like thinking we know what we're doing. We think yeah. we're doing a good job. We think we're being nice. We think we're being a good partner or whatever. And we're both doing things that are showing the other that like we think that we're, that everything is cool. And then one day we're like, wait, no, it's not working. Yeah. And yeah. And so the good thing about these guides that we have is that we don't present it in a like, hey, you suck at sex. Now you need to read this thing. It's like they're very fun. They've got a great like light feel to them. And it's just like, hey, there's always something new to explore. And they're for both partners, you know, regardless of your genders. So you can explore like, hey, let me try this on you. Or what do you think about this? So it makes it feel really fun and exciting. It's definitely not any sort of like heavy, shameful thing. So again, we'll to those you can check them out our next category of anti-confessions was having sex dreams about people who aren't your partner all right so one person said i've had a sex dream with someone other than my husband and another person said i've had sex dreams about my same sex best friend but i'm pretty sure i'm straight so we actually have a youtube video about sex dreams what they mean why you're having them spoiler alert though nothing they mean nothing it's nothing to it's nothing that you need to confess like a, one thing that we talk about in the video um look it up on youtube it's i forget the exact title but it says something like you know what do my sex dreams mean but i think a lot of people feel like having a sex dream about somebody else is something that they have to like fess up to to their partner like it like feels therefore, like, a, like like a mild form of cheating yeah like because i had the dream there must be some part of me that actually wants Wanted that to, yeah and so and but yeah it's like because for you it it must feel a bit like you've actually done it because you had that experience and if you still remember the dream pretty vividly mm -hmm. like it really does feel like yeah. you've done it but the reality is you haven't done it and the other reality is that you can't confess to everything that happens in your dreams. Like if you like rob a bank. That's the your exact dreams, example you use in the video. If you rob a bank <laughs> or, you know, if you do anything illegal in your dream, like time theft, time. Yeah. If you commit <laughs> time theft by having sex with the mailman in your dream, like you can't turn yourself into the police. Like imagine what the imagine the look on, you know, like a police officer's face. If You're like, excuse me, officer, but I just woke up from a dream where I robbed the bank and I must therefore be a criminal. So please put me in jail. I'm giving myself up like <laughs> like you couldn't pay them enough money to arrest you <laughs> okay next category and our final anti-confessions category is that there are a lot of you out there who describe yourselves as being straight but would love to have a same-sex experience yeah so one person said i would cut off my leg to have sex with my female best friend oh. wow that's perhaps a leg too far <laughs> don't you want that leg <laughs> i think you should for scissoring <laughs> I, yeah you need it for scissoring her god <laughs> it's gonna be a broken scissor but i i hope you keep your leg and i, I hope you get to have sex with your female best friend because it sounds like you really want to Ooh. all right another person said jealous my husband got an experience with same sex when he was younger and single and i didn't you know i just want to call out this one like I really appreciate that this partner is very open and accepting Hell about yeah. their husband having a same-sex experience because I think it's the really unfortunate reality that society in general is like, we think that there's something hot about two women hooking up. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, two women, that's so hot. But the idea of two dudes ho hooking up, I think the majority of people would – actually, we have pulled this on our Instagram before, and like the majority of people were like either like, ooh, that's gross, or like – 
mm, I don't really like I I don't I get it rationally, but like something just feels off about that. Like yeah. a, a guy saying that he's straight or saying that he's bi. You know, there was a lot of discrimi- discrimination. So in this one, I just love that this person's just like, yeah, my husband had a same sex experience, and it's not a big deal. I know we're only getting like one little sentence, one tiny snippet of this, but I wanted to call that out because I think that's cool, and more people should respond that way. And power to you. Yeah, I mean, you can absolutely have a same-sex experience and it does not mean that you are gay. It doesn't mean that anything about your sexuality, you get to decide what your sexuality is, what your orientation Mm -hmm. is. I mean, it's just like you are allowed to go try a new cuisine. And if you don't like that cuisine, just because you had it one time doesn't mean like, I love Korean food or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. All right, Rio's our last one. All right, last one. Um, I've always wanted to have an intimate encounter with another woman, but I probably never will. Well, we encourage you to. If you want to have one, go have one. And and again, we just really want to normalize this whole category, just like what Xander was saying. Like, it is totally okay to define yourself and to think of yourself as being straight and still be interested in same-sex exploration, to fantasize about it, to even go ahead and do it. So these are not like shameful confessions or something you need to keep a secret. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a same-sex experience, you go have a same-sex experience. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any more context. This person maybe is saying like, oh, like I'm in a committed relationship now with we have a youtube video about that but go check that out but yeah i mean who knows there's always a possibility i I mean very often like i i feel like men in general like men often are like oh yeah you want to go like hook up with another woman sure i don't really i'm not i don't feel threatened that gets back to yeah the the very different ways we treat women experimenting with other women than men experimenting with other men but that's another podcast episode for another day so that is the end of our anti-confessions our short confessions and our long confessions we hope that this episode has made you laugh i it's gonna take me a a minute to get over time theft (laughs) and the napkins uh i've had a very good time laughing and I hope that you have laughed too. Thanks. Yeah, me too. I was um, talking to the listener, oh, but okay. I know well, you laughed. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> and I'm so. talking to the listeners. You're welcome for <laughs> laughing at me or something. <laughs> so like we mentioned, we'll link a couple of things in our show notes for you. If you've never checked out our show notes, I just realized this the other day. We never oh. like tell people where to get to them. It's vmtherapy.com slash episode whatever number it is like the actual number so this is episode 79 It'll and be there should the be a number link seven the number nine i mean if you're listening to the yeah, podcast on like apple Podcasts or spotify or yeah. whatever like there should be a link i know to where but a this lot of people is. don't like go into the description you have to scroll all the way down at the end of the description so just in case you want a little shortcut it's just vmtherapy.com slash episode 79 and yeah, we will link they're really the, well uh, written <laughs> sometimes there's some jokes in them they are actually the whole show notes are really funny we have a little time stamps of like you can jump ahead to funny parts in an episode or if you listen to an episode and you want to get back to a funny part to show your partner or like a, a powerful part like oh my god I want my partner to listen to this bit you can go check check those out. There's timestamps. There's like recaps and descriptions. We try to make it really easy. And while we're on all the logistics, maybe I also should mention that we upload all of our podcasts to YouTube and get them fully captioned. So if you have any friends or your partner is hard of hearing, obviously, like if you're listening to this right now, this doesn't apply. Like you're not going to go watch the episodes on YouTube. But if you have, you can. I mean, if you one, just prefer, yeah, if you prefer YouTube, sure. We don't have it on video on YouTube yet. Sometime soon, Sometime we may soon. be able to do that. Right now, uh, given our setup, we don't really have the capability to do that, but we have plans in the works. Yeah, so go check that out. It's really important to us to try to make the podcast as accessible and inclusive as possible. So we have that there. But yes, at our show notes, we will link you to Butt Stuff, Four Play Guides, and Next Level Intercourse. All right, everyone, that's it for today's episode of Pillow Talks. Thank you so much for listening. Have a very happy holidays if you're listening to this before the Thanksgiving holiday or any holiday. Why not? (laughs) Join us again next week when we talk about why a lot of men don't like to show their emotions and we give you tips for how to make your male partner feel safe opening up to you. That's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. See you next week.